following podcast is scheduled for one fall. Coming in at 195 pounds from Studio A, he is the reigning, defending, undisputed host of the Ring of Thunder, Sexy Sexy Thor! Thor! Oof, man, I am taking this whole looser schedule shit and just milking it for all it's worth don't you think i mean in all fairness i mean i don't know where march has gone i mean you know i'm god it's already been one minute and i've already said i mean like five times but you know partied hard on my birthday and really it was more for not because it was my birthday it was just the fact that i'm managed to get Ring of Thunder out that afternoon, which I hope y'all enjoyed that because, yeah, that whole format of filming the podcast while I'm recording the podcast here on this mic, yeah, that's not going to be a thing, at least until I get a better camera, because with all the whole first it crashing on the first take 15 minutes in and then once i got it uploaded and trying to get it in iMovie and splicing it with those clips of me you know teasing the return of ring of thunder and all that um you know what i did you watched the video you clicked like hopefully i was just like yeah no that's that's a bit much because my phone is an iPhone 7 and it is tired as fuck. So thinking maybe uh, doing a sort of TLDR video separate as a companion to this here episode. And of course it applies to each episode as long as I see the format fit where I just basically cover the whole episode in like I don't know, three to five minutes which will probably end up being six to seven minutes because i just like to prattle on and on and on why am i telling you all this well because originally i did mean to do a podcast the very next week about just talking about aw revolution but then uh, i don't know what happened that week maybe my whole podcaster's block got in the way or whatever. And then uh, the following week, that Monday, yeah, it was that Monday, the 14th, uh, Scott Hall passed away, and that definitely affected me quite a bit, and it was a bit of a process trying to go through all that and then just wanted to do a episode just talking about him and his career and everything oh and on top of that wwe 2k22 came out and oh yeah that's where the time went because if i wasn't working or watching wrestling i was playing the shit out of that game fantastic game by the way i mean it still has uh, some of the bugs that kind of plagued 2k20 to be honest but i mean it was a really nice well-designed or redesigned the game and the whole combat system and everything. And I've been playing the heck out of my rise going through NXT and seeing some of the people in NXT that were either released and or were so much more awesome while they were in NXT before they came up to the main roster. You know, remember when Finn Balor was the prince and he actually acted like the prince and not just happy-go-lucky Balor Club Finn Balor. Yeah, me too. But yeah, I'm a double champ in there. I have the North American Championship and the NXT Championship. And I ended up making my guy look like a buff Shawn Michaels with like heavy metal looking gauntlets because he has the red and black Shinsuke Nakamura pants. But he's got like sort of pulled back long brown hair i mean i don't know i couldn't look those colors on that little creative character thing are a little weird like if you want your character to be like blonde then you are gonna get like 
super fucking blonde. There is no sort of weird mixture halfway in between like my hair in real life. So that's where I was at with that. And then I wanted to make gauntlets. And of course, yes, I wanted to literally have the Roman Reigns gauntlets on there. But, yeah, I mean, maybe it's actually on there and I just didn't look careful enough because when it comes to looking through all those accessories, I am not the dude for that. So I I think I got like a, for the, for, for the left forearm, yes, forearm, that's what it's called. This is Anatomy of Thunder after all. It's like a studded gauntlet and then the other was like a I don't even know how to describe it to you but it was similar to the gauntlet that Roman wears on his right arm that also goes up to his hand and then that's when I realized when I set up the finishing moves and all that that the old feast your eyes move remember when we actually got to see Dominic Dijakovic use that for quite a while it was, a, it was actually a go to sleep. At least that's what I think I just came to that very late conclusion to. I mean, if somebody wants to check my math on that, that would be appreciated. But it's like, wait a second, is, is feast your eyes go to sleep? I don't know. I was, I was much more of a wrestling noob than I am now. Back when we were actually getting to see Dijakovic use that on NXT on USA and and the and the WWE network as well cuz it was that long ago and uh, what else oh yeah and the my it's not my universe it's just universe where you get to pretty much play out a whole show but you can also choose your own WWE superstars to control and do matches with and have rivalries take place and win championships and all that. You can actually control like a singular superstar for all that now. So of course on one save I have Roman and the other save I have Becky because of course. And I'm thinking with that third save, like I might have Alexa and when it gives me the opportunity to, you know, because eventually it'll ask you like, hey, how where do you want the story to go? And you can have, I want to start a rivalry, I want to fight for a championship, and I want to start a tag team. Something with that Alexa one, when play start playing as her, and when it gives me the option, say I want to start a tag team with Liv Morgan, and then bam! Making the most out of all of my, all three of my saves on Universe and then we're going to win the tag team titles like hopefully Rhea and Liv do in real life at WrestleMania. So that's been all my experiences with 2K22 and shame on me. I still haven't gotten started on the showcase mode, which goes through Rey Mysterio's career. It looks like a lot of fun too, but sometimes showcase can just be exhausting because You know, you can go through and you can just do whatever you want and win matches, but how it's designed to do it, how you're supposed to do it, is that you're supposed to go through all these actions that it tells you to do, so it ends up playing out like the match that it happened in real life. So, I mean, let's say... And on a Rey Mysterio level, you know, you can just go up and have a regular match and just beat the shit out of Batista or Eddie Guerrero your own way. Or you can do all the things when it tells you to with 619s, Hurricane Rana's, you know, Irish whip them into the corner and everything and have it play out like it did in real life. I think there's even cutscenes and stuff in the middle. Or maybe I'm just thinking of 
when you have to do all those little objectives in a match on the whole my rise thing i don't know eventually i'll get to that part though and i'll let you know how it is but yeah 2k22 um i would say worth a look i mean like i said the bugs are still there but I mean, it's up to you if you feel like you want to deal with them or not. I mean, I I have more patience than a decent amount of people, so I was probably actually able to get the most out of the most enjoyment possible and then some out of 2K22, or 2K20, that is. And that game was broken as fuck. But, I mean, geez, the cover of the game had Roman and Becky, like... Uh, I was going to make it work. I was going to get my money's worth. I was going to enjoy that game, damn it. Oh, and it had that whole DLC with uh, Swamp Monster looking Bray Wyatt and The Fiend. Which, yeah, how about that, though, with The Fiend? I, I read because, you know, Reddit is such a wonderful source of information, a whole river of knowledge, that there was... Uh, a cut part of the female superstar my rise mode where in the whole story thing at one point the fiend is still in there and and this takes place after wrestlemania 37 so he uh you know he already got his ass handed to him by alexa and orton and instead he ends up kidnapping dana brooke and making her the sheened. Uh, I don't know. And it was all text too. There was no video or pictures of being like, hey, this is what it would have looked like. So it probably wouldn't have been great, but I couldn't tell you for sure. But I mean, if it's something involving the fiend, I'm always willing to give it a chance. I mean, come on. The first ever Firefly Funhouse wasn't much, but I gave it a chance. We kept it going, and it turned out to be pretty damn awesome until he was buried by creative. And then, unfortunately, ultimately, fired. But, hey, he's working on that movie, and I'm still waiting for him to... Still waiting to see more about that movie that he's making with Jason Baker, who's... I think he's apprenticed under Savini, or at least he's like helped him out and stuff. I know he was at a, the Days of the Dead convention in Atlanta, and <laughs> he met somebody who was cosplaying as the Fiend. And yeah, we'll just say this guy didn't really know who Jason Baker was, but he still claimed to be a, a hardcore fan of the Fiend, the cosplayer. Not Jason Baker, obviously. We know Jason Baker's legit. But I'll leave that story for a whole other time. Maybe I'll, uh, I don't know, maybe talk about that in the whole For Whom the Bell Tolls series. Um, I swear I'll eventually do. I started writing a script for that. First episode's going to be about Undertaker, by the way. But then I got writer's block, and then I start to actually start to find a voice and a character for Spooky Thor. N you know, not just pretty much Adam Weston just dropping some knowledge and talking about stuff just under a different name called Spooky Thor. But, you know, like a, an actual character. Try to put some effort into a character in the voice. You know where I'm getting at. But then I just realized when I was writing the script for the Undertaker episode, like I was just dropping regular old facts about undertaker and i'm just like do i really want this to be just like a video that's like a history of the undertaker and just you know dropping facts that anybody can internet anywhere else or pull up something better written on peacock that they can watch so i'm still trying to figure it out just like here with ring of thunder like i haven't mention shit or just been like listing off all these different things that have been going on i've just been going on some sort of tangent that's always led to wrestling 
which I decided the other day is where this whole thing should start going because if it's Ring of Thunder, it should be like Thunder Talk, but the point is wrestling and it's just me 99.9% of the time because, you know, of course the guy that's called Sexy Thor would have a sideways off the wall hodgepodge that's a little bit self-deprecating, a little bit narcissistic AF. But the point is always wrestling. Because Revolution, the AEW pay-per-view, full of wonderful, beautiful wrestling. And debuts like Swerve and William Regal. And Swerve and Keith Lee are apparently have some sort of alliance. It's like my the black and gold part of my heart that I keep out for NXT. You know, the old NXT was just weeping with joy seeing those two back together and seeing William Regal on screen again. And he's working with Brian Danielson and John Moxley. And Wheeler Yuta is trying to join up with their faction, which is causing a sort of splinter with him and best friends. And that just makes me even more excited for tonight because tonight is Pro Wrestling Turbo's A Brew Hope in which Wheeler Yuta We'll be back in action in there for the first time since uh, Grand Prix, the first pro wrestling turbo show from back in July that Lightning Lad and I attended. So that's going to be very exciting. In the main event, got Joshua Cutshaw defending the championship against Big Game James. That's going to be a huge fight. And... TK is teaming up with Savannah Evans to take on Daddy Daughter Dance, Selena Rose, and James Johnson. Shout out to them. And TK has said, so I have it on good authority, that all his fights are fair AF. So even though we see Savannah Evans helping out Tasha Steeles with nefarious means over on Impact, it's still, I think it's still going to be fair AF. So we shall see what goes on with that. And of course, all sorts of uh, Kingsgate things, because you can't have some pro wrestling turbo without some Kingsgate. And they've all got some their own little feuds going on. Like, for example, I think Mason Miles is uh, Mad Dog's newest Mad Dog Mayhem victim coming on up. And how about that Donnie Ray cut off Ethan Case's famous top knot? So, yeah, that's a, that's a big no-no. And Ethan's out for some revenge. And I'm out for some pizza. Because there, there's going to be a pizza truck there. And I'm all ready for that. And, yeah, so to sort of wrap this all up, just really remembering Scott Hall... And yeah, it's, and I watched the documentary about him recently and he was just actually finally getting his life together over the last 10 years, all thanks to uh, his good friends, Diamond Dallas Page and Jake the Snake Roberts. So yeah. I mean, you can watch any documentary listen, and everybody you've already heard talk about him. You already know his influence. He's definitely going to be missed. I, I definitely coming into this this late in the game, and I kind of learned about Scott Hall doing the thing in W or NWO and Razor Ramon separately, and then when it, I learned, oh wait, yeah, they're the same person but happening in different times and different companies, I was like, what? And learning about Razor, that was awesome because, you know, one of my favorite movies and what was absolutely my favorite movie back in high school was Scarface, which literally that's the whole uh, Razor Ramon character is Tony Montana with a kick-ass finishing move. And he really took the early 90s by storm. That was 
yeah, the early 90s, such a, I don't want to say underrated time because I feel like it gets a lot of respect, but I don't think that time can really be, have enough shine on it because, you know, that's when we had Bret Hart emerge. We had Razor Ramon doing his thing. We saw the emergence of One Two Three Kid, which would eventually turn into Six and then X Pac. So that was like sort of the climb of Sean Waltman, as he is known IRL'd through all these aliases. And yeah, if it wasn't for Razor, then he probably wouldn't have had. Then Waltman probably wouldn't have had that epic. A journey to becoming a legitimate star that he is and he is a legitimate star man is damn talented they're all talented and scott hall will just be truly missed and my respect for him just shot through the roof even more when i saw footage of his uh of him approaching the hall of fame back in 2016 when he was enshrined as razor and man had an atlanta falcons uh, baseball cap on I was just like that's my guy there you know even though I have uh, all the respect in the world for Kevin Nash's hair game in the late 90s like he's got a Falcons cap on he based his character off a of Scarface would have been real awesome to get to like actually talk meet him and talk to him and all that but at least I did get to see him in person at least one time. And of course, this is back in January 2020, which was a big time wrestling show, which would be the little did I know would be the last wrestling show I will have attended for a year and a half when Scott Hall and Kevin Nash were was at that show that was taking place at the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium. And man, I mean, you just never know. So try to meet people and definitely enjoy them while they're here. And it doesn't matter. And that's a lesson that applies not just for uh, famous people you admire or whatever. That just applies for everybody. You know, just enjoy them while you're here. Make the most out of every opportunity because you never know when that person or that thing or that opportunity will be gone but yes rest in peace scott hall the bad guy will always be missed and i think that's a good place to stop here i've got a good amount of time next week so maybe i'll shoot out maybe at least one final episode before we get to wrestlemania maybe use that to talk all about mania who knows and i'll just leave you with not with the whole kick butts not nuts but with the ever so famous scott hall quote hard work pays off dreams come true bad times don't last but bad guys do. How did watchdog groups with no experience in television take a controlling interest on Saturday morning television? When did Wonder Woman make her animated debut? Want to know why there were two competing Ghostbuster shows? How Atari changed the Saturday morning landscape? How did networks compete over similar genres at the same time? Find out all of this and more on the Best Saturdays of Our Lives podcast. A proud member of the ESO Network. Hello. Have you ever wondered how much Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster sold Superman's rights to DC for? Or which uh, popular football star was uh, the Sam Wilson the Falcons' physical appearance based on? You can find all that and more at the History of Comics podcast, a podcast dedicated to the creators, events, history, and the companies that made the great comic book medium. Hosted and created by your friendly neighborhood, J.T. Wheatley. Please listen, give it a listen at iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and all our podcasting platforms. Thank you, and go ahead and enjoy yourself a good comic book. Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Amanda Bones. And I'm Ashley. 
of How to Talk to Your Friend About Wrestling, the podcast on the Count Out Wrestling Podcast Network, a weekly show where we talk about all of our favorite things, babes, blood, and brutality. We also talk about other fun things, like is Kenny Omega finally too tan? And how much blood is too much blood? Because that looks like way too much blood. (laughs) So join us on the adventure of teaching me, Amanda Bones, about wrestling. Do you like podcasts? Then you're going to hate Thunder Talk. Tasteless subject matter. Mature humor. Contempt for our co-hosts. Unapologetic social views. Edgy music. And total irreverence for the nerd junk we love. Are all reasons why no one. No one. No one should listen to Thunder Talk. Find us on the ESO Network. And all podcasting platforms. Or don't. Whatever. Whatever.